Part 1. White Clouds. Wyvern Moon. Field of the Eagle and Lion. From on high, flocks of wyverns roar in chorus and soar the pristine skies, heading south for the winter. Fodlan's children lend their hands to winter preparations by gathering firewood and catching fish from the river's cool waters. Yet all the while, their gazes are turned skyward, drawn to the magnificent sight above. It's finally time. The Battle of the Eagle and Lion at Grander Field is this month. Don't tell me you forgot, Teach. You're kidding. Didn't Rhea or Sedith fill you in? Guess I have to do everything myself around here. The Battle of the Eagle and Lion is one of the Academy's annual traditions. It's a huge mock battle between the three rival houses. But you know all about rivalry battles, Professor. There was one right after you got here, remember? I hear the Battle of the Eagle and Lion will be held in Grander Field, far away from Garrig Mach. The house that defeats the most opponents wins. It's a three-way battle that relies heavily on strategy. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? Hey, Claude, what about Professor Manuela? Do you think she'll be able to join us despite her injuries? I'm afraid she's sitting this one out, as is Professor Hanneman. As my persistent rival will not be present, it only goes to follow that I must also sit out this year's battle. Now leave me be, Claude. Oh, don't worry about us. You know you want to see the kids in action. If it isn't our own Professor Manuela, all things considered, you're looking well. Thanks to all of you. But I'd only be a burden out there. My students don't need to see me collapsed. Well, not on the battlefield, anyway. Does that mean you really won't be joining us for the battle? Correct. We will not be participating. Regardless, do not expect victory to come easily, or at all. Well put. We've spent the past few months pushing our students to their limits. You can see me in the infirmary after they destroy you. Oh my, look at you! If you're as confident as all that, my students will walk all over you. We have taught our students well. There is no need to hold back. Challenge them with everything you have. Ah, Professor. Always a pleasure to see you. I wonder, might you have a moment to chat? Uh, come now, you have no need to be on guard. I'd never cause you harm. You're far too valuable a specimen, uh, well, that is to say, too valuable a member of the Academy staff. Indeed. The further my crest research progresses, the closer you come to learning the truth of your heritage. Is it not so? When I learned you bore the lost crest, the very crest of flames itself, I set about learning everything I could about your past. What was the origin of your bloodline? How have the events of your life been shaped by your lineage? I became somewhat obsessed, I must admit. Nothing so crass as an investigation. No, I researched. I spoke to mercenaries whom you've worked with in the past to learn about your life before the Academy. Of course, I also contacted Gerald and his mercenary friends. Your father does keep rather interesting company. I'm excited to share with you what I learned. 
but I do ask that you correct me if I am mistaken on any account. The story begins with Geralt serving as captain of the Knights of Seros. There was a woman at the monastery with whom Geralt was quite close. At first, it seemed obvious this mystery woman was your mother. Alas, that cannot be the case. The timing is all wrong. As it was told to me, the woman in question passed away shortly before Gerald left the monastery. Yet your birth occurred sometime later, while Gerald was taking work as a mercenary. This, of course, presumes your age is accurately reported. If you were born sooner, well, the story would be quite different, would it not? Oh, I am aware. You two were certainly enigmatic, as far as mercenaries go. For example, Gerald never once spoke of his time serving as captain of the Knights. That's quite a secret to keep for all those years. In the end, your old acquaintances had little definitive to say about either of you. However, they all agreed on one thing. Your father and yourself were a strong pair. Warriors to be respected and feared. You in particular. In fact, many came to know you as the Ashen Demon. They say you would destroy your enemies without a hint of emotion on your face. The mercenaries I spoke to revered you as a living legend of sorts. So, that is what I learned. And, I admit, it is barely more than I knew before. The next step in my research is to ask your blood for answers, and hope that it is more forthcoming than your past acquaintances. weird lately. Are you sick or something? Uh, Raphael! No, I'm fine. So what's going on with you? Are you worried about something? Want to talk about it? I don't know about worried. It's just, you know, your parents. Hey, now! Ah! What is it? I thought I told you to drop it. Just forget about it. I can't just forget about it. You lost your parents. And when you were in need, my family did nothing to help you. Well, what were they supposed to do about it? It's not like they killed my parents. And besides, that's our folks you're talking about. That's got nothing to do with us, right? I still can't help but feel responsible. Like I owe you somehow. Look, if you want to do something, just be my pal like you used to. We can eat tasty meals together, play games, make jokes, and laugh until our bellies hurt. Are you sure that's what you want? Of course it is! We were friends before, and there's no reason we can't be friends now. Raphael, I... Thank you. And I'm sorry about before. <laughs> Hello, Marianne. All done for the day. Oh, Sylvain. Yes, I was just heading back to my quarters. Well then, my timing couldn't be better. I was just heading into town and I thought, maybe you'd like to join me? Um, I don't think I should. 
I heard a story once about a beautiful maiden who was locked up in a monastery day and night. She was held prisoner by her own fear of the outside world. Then a brave knight set the girl free and took her to town, where they drank tea and talked for hours. So, my fair maiden? Please, you should not waste your time on me. Besides, my adoptive father requested that I not stray too far from the monastery. Margrave Edmund wants to keep you locked up, huh? I've heard he's... Uh, let's call it ambitious. Well, just tell him who I am. I think he'd approve. I'm heir to House Gautier, one of the most prominent families in the kingdom. I've got a crest, I've got money, and I'm stunningly handsome. What's that face for, Marianne? Was it the handsome thing? I can see how that might have been a bit much. I... I don't really know you all that well, but I don't think it makes a difference. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me that you have a crest. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't mean you should find my crest impressive. I meant your family would, and... You know what? Maybe I should start over. If you're going into town, please just go without me. Oh, okay. I've got to get going anyway. Places to be, you know. <laughs> well, this is me going. But remember, should you ever need me, I will forever be your knight, my maiden. I wonder what he meant by that. Hey there, Hilda. You're looking cute today. Thanks. You're looking quite handsome yourself. You know exactly how to talk to a guy. I like it. What's with all the books? Oh, these? I was just bringing them to... Uh, ouch! Ouch! What's wrong? Did you hurt your foot? Uh, yeah, I tripped earlier. But I'm supposed to return these books to the library by the end of the day. Relax. I'm sure there's a handsome guy around here who knows how to carry books to the library. You rest your foot. I'll take care of this. Oh, no, that's all right. You must have something more important to do. Nothing is more important than helping you. Just pile the books on that desk, and I'll get them where they're going. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you so, so much. It's nothing. I'm happy to... Wow, that is a lot of books. I'll just leave them right here for you. Thanks again, Sylvain. You're the best. Wait a minute. Some of these books have dust on them. She's been holding on to these for months. The professor was looking for this one a few weeks ago. Hilda... Hang on. Did she just trick me into doing something she didn't want to do? garments in style?
I did pretty well. I can't believe I did it! I passed. monastery is more dangerous than I expected. It's likely that our foes have infiltrated the ranks of the teachers. And there may be others of questionable character about as well. If you ask me, there is something amiss about that old man, Tomas. It's about Monica. Does she seem off to you? She was in prison for a long while, but she seems to have recovered almost instantly, and she's been bizarrely cheerful. You see what I mean? I wonder if she's straining to seem happy just to make people comfortable. Hmm, and why is she so close to Edelgard anyway? <laughs> The Battle of the Eagle and Lion is a free-for-all contest among the three classes. If you are victorious, the Archbishop will no doubt present you with a reward. <laughs> Just what I thought you'd say. What do you say, Edel? Shall we meet up in the library later, too? Oh, hello, Professor! Do you need something? I'm... A little busy at the moment. Sorry, Professor. I've got a lot of questions to ask Adel here. Since I couldn't graduate last year, I really want to make sure I can do so this year. Definitely. Along with Flane, we found another female student who went missing last year. But now the combat Professor Yuritsa has vanished. 
His origin begged many questions, so there were plenty of objections to his appointment here. He is apparently from House Rim of the Empire, but he was adopted from another family, or so they say. Anyway, there hasn't been much good to be said about House Rim in recent decades. Along with Flank, but now his he is of any. Oh, having a fishing tournament before the Battle of the Eagle and Lion. At first, I couldn't figure out what they were thinking, but the fish are especially tasty this time of year. So I don't question it anymore. Have you had any, Professor? You'd better eat up before it's all gone. in the territory of House Burglies in the Empire. That's right next to my home, the region of House Varley. Oh, no. What if... What if my parents come to watch? Ah! Really? Are you sure? You wouldn't say that if you weren't completely sure, right? Field. It's idiocy to travel that far. It may be a tradition, but it takes forever to get there and is exhausting. So pointless. I guess there's nothing to be done about it. Even by you, Professor. Fodlin is big. It's not as big as Almira is, but it's still pretty big. Travel? I don't know. Never thought about it, I guess. Professor, as Seth hath told you, we're to have a fishing tournament. Given the events of the last month, I believe this is just the sort of distraction we need, staff and student alike. I do enjoy the sport, yet I wouldn't say I'm particularly good at it. I believe it best that I stick to quietly fishing by myself.
I'm not interested in glory or prizes. All I want is a formidable enemy to sink my teeth into. You're one of them, Professor. Professor, nothing to report. Young Monica disappeared last year. I thought she had simply run along home. But it turns out she was kidnapped. I can't believe it. How awful it must have been for the poor thing. They say her personality has completely changed. But at least she seems more cheerful than before. Grateful to be alive, perhaps? Do you have time for a request? first refreshing breeze upon your face, you know it is almost time for the battle of the eagle and lion. Grander Field is within the Empire, but the path there from the monastery necessitates passing through Alliance territory. Fodlan's biggest river, the Aramid River, flows along the border between the Empire and the Alliance. You will have to cross one of the largest bridges upon that river, the Great Bridge of Murden. Death Knight's true identity. Personally, I don't think it could be Yuritsa. He taught me swordsmanship. He said I had talent and the potential to get pretty strong. He was a little scary, of course. But it's hard for me to believe he's a bad person. Fishing tournament, huh? Sounds fun, but not as fun as reeling in the ladies. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. The most important thing right now is preparing for the battle of the eagle and lion. After all, the ladies love nothing more than a winner. And around here, there's no bigger game. I knew you'd understand, Professor. Flane and Monica, was it? I'm glad they were returned safe and sound. Did you want something? So it is. I need a favor. tried it once and ugh, gross i don't even really like to eat fish let alone catch and gut them besides who can think about fishing right now 
The battle of the eagle and lion is coming up soon. Feeling confident? That's the spirit. Hello. <laughs> right. Wonder Field is in the Empire, right? I wonder how we'll get there. I thought I heard that there's no path that goes straight from the monastery to the Empire. Oh, perhaps we'll travel through Alliance territory. Yes, I see. From the east, we would go... Mm, there. Ah, yes, that must be it. Excuse me, Professor. Um... Do you think it would reflect poorly on me if I chose not to take part in the Battle of the Eagle and Lion? Well, I don't really want to leave the monastery. I'm not very confident, but I'll try my best. All the way to the Empire for a mock battle? This is serious business, and there's a reward to be had as well. I'd really like to win this thing. Everyone else seems to be raring to go too. We're all looking to you to guide us, Teach. The Empire used to control all of Fodlan, but after the Civil War, the Northern region split off and became the Kingdom. Later, the Eastern part of the Kingdom seceded to become the Alliance. There are three powers today, but a thousand years ago, we were all united as one. Even now, among the nobles of the Empire, there are some who dream of reunifying Fodlan. I received a rare letter from my father recently. He said that he is praying for the Golden Deer House to emerge victorious, insistently praying. My father attended the Officer's Academy and won a glorious victory in the Battle of the Eagle and Lion. I think he is quite proud of that, even to this day. I suppose that shows how great an honor it truly is. just absolutely exhausted. I swear to you, Professor, every month we worked harder than the month before. I had imagined the Academy as a chance to possibly relax before our lives began in earnest. Agreed. That's the Church of Saros for you. What is it they say? Those with power are obliged to use it?
After the Battle of the Eagle and Lion, a prize is awarded to the winner by the Archbishop herself. It's a three-way battle, so you can't waste too much time just observing. You have to jump right in there. You have to be proactive and defeat the most opponents. Do that, and it's quite possible the Archbishop will recognize how strong you are. Ah, great memories. I was a student here many years ago. I know what I speak of. favor to ask. Hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was lost in thought. The Death Knight's true identity. Could it actually be Professor Yoritsa? Hello there. Need something? See you again soon. Hi. Oh, hi, Professor. Have you heard the rumor about the Goddess Tower? Well, there's an annual ball here the month after next, during the ethereal moon. They say if a boy and a girl wish for something together at the Goddess Tower on that night, the Goddess herself will grant it. I don't know where the rumor started, but it's a great story, isn't it? Keep my voice down. Don't want people thinking I'm vying for attention. But how loud is too loud? Regardless of the quality, this is a good chance for us to prove our solidarity. I always thought I was pretty good, you know? Then I'd go and get stabbed. Oh. But my opponent was the Death Knight, so... I figure I did pretty well to only get stabbed. I wonder if it's true that he is actually Yuritsa. Whoever he is, I'm going to make him pay. It turns out that when I get stabbed, I get really mad. I'm not going to let him get the better of me again. Greetings. 
don't know if you've heard, but Flane is very special. Her blood carries a rare crest. Oh, the lengths to which she could advance my research, if only I were able to study her. If only it weren't for Sedat's strict orders. He protects his sister with unusual zeal. I dislike it, but I agree. The time I would spend begging him and accomplishing nothing would be better spent on other research. Yes. The recent happenings at the monastery. There is something going on behind the scenes here. I've been commissioned to investigate as well. As I've already mentioned, this month I'm off to the kingdom. You be on your guard, okay? <laughs> uh, perhaps I've gotten in your head too much. I won't go dying on you. I've stayed alive this long after all. Well... The situation last month was dire indeed. The students endured great hardship. I hope you were able to put all of that behind you, so that you may focus on this month's assignment. That is to be expected. I too cannot quite shake that feeling of unease. Even so, we must both strive to put that nasty business behind us. I look forward to seeing your skills on display at the Battle of the Eagle and Lion. I have something to ask of you. I have not even told you what my request is yet. Well? Fine. Flane has been through an awful lot this past month. To make up for that, I have decided to give her whatever she wants. I asked her what she would like, and she expressed a desire for a feast of fish. Since I am sure the students would be interested, I have decided to hold a fishing tournament here at the monastery. I have left all of the specifics to Shamir. Please, enter and put in your best effort. Practice yields results. Fishing. My older brother used to take me out. Why don't you give it a try, too? They say we can eat whatever we catch. Hmm. This isn't mine. You should ask around. Hi there! Sometimes it's nice to dangle a fishing line and let your mind wander. I'd love to spend some time lounging around by a scenic river or lake. Holding such a frivolous and downright ridiculous event so close to the Battle of the Eagle and Lion? It's absolutely absurd! Although, they did say we could eat whatever we catch. I'm a sucker for a good meal. I just couldn't resist. Yes, that's mine. Thank you very much. I've been looking for it. <laughs> hey, Professor! Did you hear about the fishing tournament? You get to fish in the pond as much as you want. 
The more you catch, the more you get to eat. Come on. Why are they having a fishing tournament now? Are they just giving up on the battle of the eagle and lion? You're not condoning this, right? Are you? Good. I'm looking forward to seeing you in action. I hope Captain Gerald will be watching. <laughs> Are you going to participate in the fishing tournament, Professor? with frequency back in Bridget. I will not have Lizzie. Will you be trying to fish too? I had lost the place of this. You have my thanks. I'm going to catch me some mighty fish. Just you wait and see. Hmm. But they haven't been biting. What shouting? Everyone told me I was too loud, so I've been using my quiet voice. I told my brother I had a craving for some tasty fish. I did not realize when I did so that it would turn into... Well, this. My apologies. Hmm. Oh, that is mine! Thank you so very much. I'm going to... I appreciate this. Can you believe what Sedith said? Catch some tasty fish for Flane. I'm her bodyguard. Oh, this is mine. Thanks. I'm glad to have it back. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the Monastery Fishing Tournament. You look confused. Didn't Sabbath tell you about it? Just catch whatever fish Flame requests. Show any fish you catch to Flame. I have a favor to ask. Thanks. How did you know this was mine? So you're taking part. Uh, how would you feel about a little friendly competition? Catch the same kind of fish as me and we'll compare the two. Biggest wins. Oh, are you taking part in the fishing tournament? Let's put your skills to the test. Whoever can catch the biggest one of these fish wins. Are you taking part as well? Why don't we have some fun with this? A little contest. If you catch a fish like this, come show it to me. Whoever catches the bigger fish will be the victor. <laughs> oh, you're entering too. Then how about a little friendly competition? Let's see who can catch the biggest fish. There's no way I'll lose. So you are joining the fishing tournament? That's great. But you don't stand a chance against me. I just caught this beauty. I bet you can't catch a bigger one of the same kind. Yes. I am happy that you will have participation. Maybe you and I both can have a small contest with each other? We will both have catching of the same fish type and do comparisons. Whoever has the fish with the biggest size will be winning, okay? Have you thought about entering? Maybe you and I could have a little friendly competition. 
I just caught this fish here. Why don't you try catching a bigger one of the same type? Will you be taking part two, Professor? Uh, I must admit I am quite excited. I cannot recall the type of fish I was hoping to dine on. So, if you do manage to catch a fish, do you mind bringing it for me to see? Hey. Yes. <laughs> Why are they having a fishing tournament now? Professor. So you're taking part. Catch the same kind of... Oh, so catch the same... Looks like you've been doing some fishing. Let's see what you've got. Wow, that's a spectacular fish. You win. I can't compete with that. Wow, that's... Ah, you already got your hands on some fish. Let's compare them. Oh, I'm lost. Is there anything you can't do? You've caught something, have you? Let us pit our fish against each other. Alas, your fish is clearly grander than mine. I suppose you win this time. <laughs> Did you catch something? Let me see what you got. No way! That fish looks bigger and tastier. I can't believe I lost. <laughs> All right, let's see what you got. I... I lost? But how? Ugh. I guess I underestimated you, Professor. Yes. Show me the fish, so we can see whose has the biggest size. I will have comparisons now. Your fish has way more size. I have had losing. I mean, I have lost. <laughs> Oh, you've caught one. Let me see. Nice, you beat me. This is for you. Oh, you caught one! Yes, yes, yay! Oh, this is it. This is the fish I have been pining for. I am so pleased. I shall cook it up immediately. Thanks. I guess that's it. <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? 
I'm going to catch me some mighty fish. Just you wait and see. This created more fun than I have experienced in a long time. Did you also have the fun? I wasn't expecting much, but this tournament was a lot of fun. The fishing tournament's over already? Guess it's time for my personal eating tournament then. Best part is, no losing. Hey. All that's left now is to eat it. Should I smoke it? Stew it? Ugh, I'm drooling already. I think that's the end of the fishing tournament. I suppose it's time to prepare for the battle of the eagle and lion. <laughs> fishing was a nice change of pace, but now it's time to focus on the battle of the eagle and lion. Hey. The fishing tournament is over. I heard you did some fishing, and that flame is happy. I love to cook. What are we making today? Is that so? I have a lot of experience in the kitchen. I can make just about anything. Wow. My fuck, I think he is. This looks delicious. Let's eat. I appreciate any good meal, but nothing beats enjoying my favorite food. I like this, but it's been a while, so I'm not sure. Hmm. I like seeing a table full of my favorite dishes. Thank you. 
Hey, Professor. The students seem to like you. <laughs> and you're not modest about it. I like that. Still, I can't deny that you've got skills. It's a little strange, to be completely honest. I had my doubts, but they were right to make you a professor. I'd be suspicious of their true intentions, if I were you. But what's it matter? Seems like it turned out just fine for you. I'll admit, it's unbelievable that you used to be a mercenary. I was a merc before coming here, but... I can't imagine pulling off your fancy tactician act. I freeze up near royals and nobles. You deal with a lot of nobles when you're a merc. I didn't mind putting my life on the line, but I never liked having to bow and scrape to our noble employers. And that's what I like about being a knight. I get to punch all the nobles I want. <laughs> I'm joking. But the knights do make a good business partner. I don't believe in the Church of Seros. It makes me a bit of an anomaly among the knights. Rhea took me in, so I became a knight to repay my debt to her. I may be a knight, but it still feels like I'm doing the same things I did as a merc. Who knows, though? Maybe you and I will end up working together. Us knights are a pretty tough crew. I'm guessing you'd run circles around us, though. I'm interested to see where your path leads you. are only creating more rubbish in the world. Professor? Oh, I didn't see you standing there. My apologies. Oh, uh, that paper. Well, I... Yes. Yes, it was. It was a letter from my father. I understand where you're coming from here, but I have no need of such things. It isn't like anything of importance was written on it. Curious? I suppose there's no harm in allowing you to read it. Go on, then. My dearest daughter, Ingrid. Are you well? I trust that you are behaving yourself and refraining from causing trouble for others. Things on the home front are in order. A marriage proposal for you and the Viscount's son should be prepared soon. Although, I am quite certain there are many superior candidates at Garrig Mock Monastery. As you know, the very survival of our family is dependent upon whom you marry. You are the only one left in the family who can make things right. We are all counting on you. Do not lose sight of what truly matters. Yes. Perhaps you found it somewhat entertaining. I've told you that we've never been very well off financially. My noble family, House Galatea, branched off from House Daphnel in the Alliance. Shortly after, we were lucky enough to receive the support of the royal family, allowing us to attain nobility, to some extent. But the territory we watch over is poor, its harvest meager, and our noble blood too has grown thin. Neither my father nor my brothers bear a crest. I, however, do bear a crest. Because of this, my father sees me as our family's one hope for the future. A crest is highly prized among nobles. Were I to marry into a greater noble family, that financial support could soothe our woes. Thank you, Professor. 
Your sentiment alone is a great comfort to me. Despite my own feelings, I understand his approach to all this. It isn't that he doesn't care for me. I understand it very, very well. Which is why I... I apologize, Professor. I must be going. Hey! Right. All that's left now is... Good timing, Professor. There's actually something I want to speak with you about. Will you put me in your class, too? There are so many things I want to learn from you. Being in another class makes it especially challenging. Thank you, Professor. I look forward to studying under you. I will be extra diligent with my studies. Thank you for this opportunity. Professor, I... Oh, don't worry. It's nothing. Actually, could we talk for a bit? Somewhere a little more private? I'm just gonna come right out and say it. I find you a little difficult to be around. I know, I know. I'm your student and you're just trying to watch out for me. But the way you look at me sometimes, it's like you're seeing right through me. Don't worry. I know you don't mean anything bad by it. I'm just too self-conscious, I guess. The thing is, I don't have anything to call my own. No land, no birthright, no fortune. Little knowledge or battle skill. I think that's why I always clung to my popularity as a diva. Even after leaving the stage behind, I sort of kept up the act. When I look at you, it's like your eyes are accusing me. Telling me that you see right through it. That's what I mean when I say it's difficult being around you. Hey, uh, this might be nuts, but maybe you could show me some kind of weakness of yours? You know my biggest fear. If I know one of yours, maybe I'll feel less... I don't know... Vulnerable. Excellent. Well then, don't mind me. You know, Professor, I never hear any gossip about you. <laughs> of a romantic nature, I mean. Would I be right in assuming you're not very... experienced with romance? Maybe we should find out somehow. Um, Professor? What's with you? Why aren't you reacting to anything I'm doing? Oh, come on! Is your heart even beating? You're making me lose my confidence. <laughs> Don't be so silly. Huh? It really isn't beating? Is what I'd say if I were more gullible. <laughs> You're just fooling around, Professor. I'm not sure how you did it, but that was a good one. <laughs> the battle of the eagle and lion is coming up soon. Feeling confident? Hey there, Professor. I was thinking it might be nice to join your class. I'm not unhappy where I am, but I was just thinking that maybe if I was with you, well, I might learn even more. You're the kind of guy a gal could pay attention to, you know? Oh, yeah? That's great! <laughs> I'm looking forward to spending more time with you, Professor. 
The Battle of the Eagle. I have done it! No need to discontinue with the praises. I have done it! Well worth the effort. I got it? Nice! I knew I could get it! Oh, thanks, Professor. That's real nice of you to say. I... I just got lucky. It's fun when you know what you're doing. This was hardly a challenge for me. <laughs> it was only a trifle. My efforts have borne fruit. This was hardly a challenge for me. Now I see the heart of it. Try to 
to get the next one, too. I can't believe it. It's starting to make sense. I have a question. Impressive. You know, you're a really good teacher. Professor. Time to sneak off and do some painting. Professor, such lovely weather today, huh? I was, uh, just about to go for a walk. What, this? No, it's, uh... Oh, I'm sorry, Professor. I'll admit it. I was going to do some painting. You remember the place where we talked before? I've been painting the scenery there. I'm still keeping up with my academics and training, of course. I just paint in my spare time, as a change of pace. Oh, you're not? Ah, well, yes, I suppose you're not. 
I may have gotten ahead of myself. I'm sorry for panicking there. Honestly, I'm just worried that my father will find out that I've been painting. Of course. Why would you go out of your way to tell him that? Completely illogical of me. But it seems I've developed a bit of a complex about it. My father's not a fan of my artistic pastime, you see. We're a merchant family, and my older brother is set to inherit the business. As for me, my father decided I should be a knight. That's why I'm at the academy. Painting won't help me become a knight. It's a waste of time. Well, yes. I feel like I'm betraying my parents. I hear the business has been slow over the past few years. If I become a knight for an influential noble house, I could use my connections to help support them. My father was determined to send me here. He must have been, considering the enormous amount of money he spent. I don't think I'm well suited to being a knight. My parents sent me to the academy for their sake, not my own. When I think about how hard my family is working just to stay in business, how can I sit idly by? All of which is just to say that painting will have to remain my little hobby. Nothing more. Not that I could make a career out of it even if I wanted to. That's just a fantasy. Let's see this through. We'll be fine. There. It's over. My efforts have borne fruit. I've got a grasp on this. Well worth the effort. Ingrid, do you have a moment? We're going to perform an opera in the cathedral. Uh, we are? Yes! It's a small one, but I need some volunteers. Let me tell you, Alois is very excited. He's already doing a ton of work for the show. I see. What's it about? Classic opera fair. A tragic love story. A princess who falls in love with a handsome commoner. But our princess, she carries the fate of her country on her shoulders. And no matter how in love she is, she can't just marry whoever she wants. Or can she? That's quite a story. Sounds tragic and beautiful. Who will be playing the princess? Me. I was a singer in an opera company, though I hope I'm not being too presumptuous casting myself. Even if you're not interested in being part of the production, you will come to see it, won't you? I'm asking everyone to dress up properly. I want it to be a stylish and elegant night. That does sound quite lovely. And I do want to go, but I, um... Please, don't worry if you can't make it. I understand we're doing this on such short notice. No, no, it's not that. I just... Uh, I struggle with the elegant part of things. I don't really do myself up in elegant clothing and makeup and such. If fashion's your concern, lady, you're in luck. I am? If you don't dress for the occasion, no one will take you seriously. But don't worry about a thing. I'll happily work my magic on you. When it's time, I'll meet you in your room. We'll make you the most beautiful woman in the theater. Oh, goodness. Okay. <laughs> Hi there, Ash. Here to do some reading as well, I take it? Uh, Ash? Huh, Ingrid! Uh, you gave me a start! How long have you been standing there? Not too long. Apologies for startling you. Must be a great book for you to be so deeply engrossed in it. What has you so captivated? 
Oh, uh, it's quite an old book. One of the really old legends of Fargus. Aha! It must be the Sword of Kaifon then, yes? Oh, so you know it. Oh, yes. I know it quite well. I read it often as a child. In fact, I read it so much that my personal copy fell apart. I brought it everywhere with me. I adore that book. The Tale of the Warrior Kaifon, whose devotion and loyalty enabled his best friend Luke to become king. He went to great lengths to see things through. Exactly. I love the image of him charging forward into the fray, ready to take on any obstacle in the name of his king. Indeed. He was the very picture of the perfect knight. In my opinion, the best chapter is right around the middle of the book. Ah, oh, the part about the war of the eagle and lion? That's my favorite part. In a flash, Kaifon's sword flew from its scabbard. The knight parried the assassin's blade mere inches from the spine of his king. Kaifon's blade hummed like the wind, slashing the enemy's throat. In mere moments, their forces lay vanquished, decimated by his mighty blows. <laughs> I can recite the entirety of it if you like. I never grow weary of that tale, the pinnacle of knighthood, with all its struggles and glory. I know just what you mean. I never get tired of it. Some people laugh at me for reading these old tales, but I'll never outgrow them. I'm glad to find someone who shares my enthusiasm. I'm glad of it as well. Tell me, what other books do you enjoy, Ash? Well, the first one I ever read was Lug and the Maiden of Wind. Oh, you have fantastic taste! That story is another favorite. The final chapter makes me tear up every time. I know. When I first read it, I just couldn't get that ending out of my head. It seems we have much in common. I look forward to chatting again sometime. I'd love to. Yes, let's. Perfect comprehension. Was there any doubt?
Thanks a bunch. Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Come back soon.
I'll need to make some adjustments. Time to start over again. Leave it to me. Ready anytime. Apologies. I got this. That helps. Ready and willing. Stay focused. I stand ready. Let us away. Takes care of that. Never underestimate an outsider. Thanks for that.
guess I feel a little stronger. Okay, I've got it now. Shall we dance? It's not luck, it's fate. Life doesn't always go as planned. That was amazing. Apologies. <laughs> I am still far from my best. I'm Ruff. sorry. Well done. <laughs> Sorry. Okay? That's the golden deer for you. You're really tough.
a trivial victory. Delicate flower, you know. Who knew? <laughs> I'm getting better. My strength building. <laughs> this is what I do. One. It's hard to be happy about this. done yet. I've reached the pinnacle.
might be interesting. I'm closer than ever to my dream. A balance of brawn and beauty. Ready and willing. Who, me? Anytime. Leave 
it to me. I got this. I'm sorry. Who, oh, me? Stay focused. I stand ready. Let us away. A trivial victory. Appreciate that. least I could do.
have an idea. Sorry, but victory is mine. Of course I won. Won that. Better than before. I get things done. Nobles must be strong. That helps. I understand more every day. Thank you. If I made it this far.
I'm that great? Not as hard as I thought. No. <laughs> Nothing to get excited about. Got it. Good to go. Thank you. 
professor. Excuse me. I've had this kind before. It's quite good. Thank you very much. Oh, that's delicious. Huh? I see now. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Have you ever seen a ghost? Probably for the best if you haven't. Yes. Yes. Huh? Wow, I can have this? <laughs> I've been trying to build more muscle lately. I need to be stronger to keep up with everyone. Yes. Is that right? Yes. What is it? <laughs> Thanks for the tea. I hope we can do this again. You on my side, we're solid. I'll do what I can. Can't argue with results, can you? I think it's coming along. I see now. I'm certain I've improved. I can really do this. Hey, Professor, did I ever tell you what happened with that thief? I went after him, and I did manage to catch up, but... Sort of. I actually decided not to make him pay for it. <laughs> My pockets were pretty empty after that incident, if you want to know the truth. Well, what happened was, when I caught him, I asked him why he stole the book. He said he thought it would fetch a good price, and that he really needed the money. He had a sick kid and couldn't pay for medicine. Oh, maybe you're right. But if he really did have a sick child, that would be a matter of life and death. A little money is nothing compared to that. I'd rather believe a lie than risk someone's life if I'm wrong. And to be completely honest, there was a time when I wasn't so different from him. It was a long time ago, and I've put all that behind me now. But yes, I was. My parents died of illness, so I had to provide for my little brother and sister. I did my best to earn money for them legitimately, but I wasn't able to bring home enough. So I turned to thieving, from people on the streets, from shops, even from soldiers. I knew it was wrong, but seeing my brother and sister's smiling faces made me too happy to stop. I really regret that part of my life. I was stupid, but shortly after I turned nine, I crept into a local noble's mansion, aiming to steal whatever I could get my hands on. The noble had all sorts of valuables, but what really caught my eye was a book with a fancy cover. That book was Lug and the Maiden of Wind. 
The night in the illustrations was so impressive, I just couldn't tear my eyes away. <laughs> well, that was part of it. But certain books are also really valuable, you know. You probably see where this is going. Moments after I grabbed the book, I was caught in the act by the noble. And that noble was none other than Lenato. But Lenato was incredibly kind. Without asking any questions, he gave me the book. And money, too. When I told him I couldn't read, he invited me into his mansion, along with my brother and sister. He taught me how to read, personally. So, with the thief I caught in town, I was trying to do the same thing. To be like Lenato. I want to make up for the bad things I've done. To leave this world better than I found it. That's why, even if it wasn't easy on my pockets, I'm proud to say I helped him. I know what you're trying to say. My contribution probably won't change much. And it's not like I have the money to help everyone who's suffering from poverty. Even so, I can't bear to stand by and do nothing. What else could I have done, Professor? You've done me a great service. Thank you so much. tremendous help it was but a trifle surely there was no small amount of danger but in the interest of experience I was happy to endure you're so strong that I can't help but feel safe in your presence yes uh, of course although no matter how much brute strength we bring to bear it is important that there be a leader on the field as well without someone possessed of my sound judgment and adaptability we would surely be lost Surely, yes. My thoughts exactly. But, um... Hmm? Uh, what is it? I'm going to keep providing support from the back. You wouldn't mind doing more fighting for me, would you? Oh, well, uh, physically, I can, certainly. But if you mean on an everyday basis... Uh... I knew you would. You have the generous soul of a true noble. I'll have to write back home and sing your praises. Really? You mean to your father and brother? Oh, yes. I have to write my big brother pretty often, as a matter of fact. He gets upset if I don't. And yet, I never have much to write about. I've been really straining for topics. That must strike you as a terrible nuisance, the idea of me blabbing about you in my letters. Nuisance? Oh, hardly. Your brother is one of the foremost commanders of the Alliance. I can think of no higher accolade than to have my name passed onto his noble ear. Then I'll tell him about all your thrilling exploits. Although, if you can't help, that's okay too. I'll find something else to write about. Oh, fear not. I shall show you exploits of a nature more thrilling than you could ever dream. Incidentally, when you write to him, please do not refer to me merely as Lawrence. <laughs> Please use my full name, Lawrence Hellman Gloucester. This will be an excellent opportunity to advance the status of the Gloucester name. <laughs> what a funny boy. Ah, Dorothea. Your beauty puts even the most pristine flower to shame. Ah, Lawrence. As silver-tongued as ever. Oh, not at all. I must bid you good day. I see the rumors are true. What a shame. Rumors? About me? Whatever do you mean? Why, that you're always ready to flirt. Unless she's a commoner. Then you'll bid her good day as quickly as possible. Like you did with me just now. Are we so unpleasant to speak to, us commoners? That is a rather... Uh, pointed question, but I do happen to have an answer for you. 
As the heir to House Gloucester, I am in search of a bride of suitable social status. The Alliance isn't fully unified. I require someone who'll help bring it together. I think you could find plenty of suitable women, even among the masses. Do not be so certain. A lady who marries me must be prepared to enter noble society, whether she wishes to or not. It is a complex web of etiquette and expectation, not a world one could easily step into without the proper upbringing. What's more, House Gloucester would hardly see much benefit were I to join myself to the household of a commoner. Oh, I can imagine. Well, I suppose that means any friendship between you and I is doomed as well. Isn't that a rather excessive conclusion? You want someone to birth your house's next generation? I want someone to share my life with. I'm not even an option in your eyes, and you're hardly viable in mine. However, we're all friends here, aren't we? So I suppose politeness at the very least is in order. To find the analog of your beauty in nature, I can turn only to the lily. Only that flower is so sweet and so delicate as to approach your loveliness. Why, just look at these soft, delicate fingertips you have. It is as though they could blossom into fragrant lilies before my very eyes. If you're so wild about flowers, why don't you try a flower shop? Ugh. Oh, wow. That was... I'm sorry I saw that, but I am so glad I saw that. Oh, did you not realize? I was only testing her. Any woman who is taken in by such simple flattery is ill-suited to my noble disposition. Oh, okay, I'm glad you explained it, because I thought you just got rejected. Just flat out, no way to make yourself feel better about it, rejected. And the reason, your nobleness, is because that is really not the way you go about hitting on a girl. Oh, is it not? And I suppose you consider yourself an expert on the subject. Pay attention, kid. Maybe you'll learn something. When I saw you, I just had to come over and say hello. Because finding you here uh, feels like fate. Maybe we could go get some tea. Get to know each other better. I think you must have mistaken me for someone else. Someone who cares. Please excuse me. Exquisite. Simply masterful. When is the wedding? That's weird. Girls usually fall for that speech. You must have spooked her. To think that the noble House Gautier would be blessed with such a graceful and charming heir. Please, I'm a much better heir than a self-important failure like you. Ugh, this is not worth my time. You took the words right out of my mouth. What are you up to? Working? You're in the way, Hilda. Move. How rude. I'm not in the way. Are you just here to goof off? No. I'm here to feed the horses, actually. Uh-huh. Where's the fodder, then? I wasn't sure where to find it. Can you help with that? I'll take care of it. I'm cleaning the place anyways. Oh, thanks. It's great to have you on the job. I know you'll handle it perfectly. Yeah, well, I don't like it when I feel like I'm not doing my part. You're always so focused on the task at hand. Sometimes I almost forget you're all Myron. I always thought they were a rough and unreliable sort of people. Though you're not really like the rest of them. You seem normal for the most part. Rough and unreliable, huh? My family has to fight against Almyron sometimes. Not that my father or brother ever clued me in on what the battles were like. But I do know that armies from Almyra will attack without reason and break treaties and tell lies. Everyone says they're a bunch of brutes. Yeah? Huh. Am I boring you? I'm talking about your people. Those aren't my people. I was just born there. Hmm. Okay. Let's turn the tables. How do the people of Fodlin seem to you, from an Almyran perspective? Huh. That 
look on your face. Are you okay? I can't tell you what I think of folks from Fodlin. I don't really got an impression of them altogether. What's that supposed to mean? There's all sorts of different people everywhere. You can't say everybody of one place is any one thing. It's no different when you're talking about Fodlin or Almira or any place else. And wherever you go, you see people in power keep the weak ones down. The only difference far as I'm concerned is, one place has Lady Rhea, and the other don't. I passed. You want me to cook? Not that I don't have experience, but... Cooking's a bit like hunting, but less satisfying. I see. Since we were little, Ingrid's always gotten this odd look in her eye when someone brings up food. That's mine. Thank you for finding it.
Not sure I should sing with everyone. I'm not great at harmonizing. Singing with others is a nice change of pace. Usually I do it when I'm alone. Need something? This one? You're all set. See you again soon. Professor! Of course. I look forward. Such power dwells within. I hear that you participated in the fishing tournament. I appreciate you taking the time. Yes. How are preparations for the Battle of the Eagle and Lion going? Hmm? Fishing? Taking it easy, are you? The recent happenings at the monastery. There is something going on behind the scenes here. I've been commissioned to investigate as well. As I've already mentioned, this month I'm off to the kingdom. You be on your guard, okay? Ever since the tournament, the kitchen is completely overtaken with fish. The cooks cannot keep up. Indeed, I received my fa- I think he is- Thank you. I am here for the invitation. Thank you. Settles nicely on the palate. You are quite an intriguing person. I would be lying if I said I did not find you fascinating. <sighs> this was a wonderful. Next time, I will provide the tea. Farewell. Pardon me. Hello there. This one, yes? Return soon, please. Welcome. This one? Thank you. Please come again. Welcome. Will this one do? Many things. Will this one do? Will this one do? Many thanks. Come back soon. Hello. 
What do you require? Farewell. Welcome. Please come again. Hello there. This one, yes? This one, yes? I thank you. 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 This one, yes? This one, yes. I this one, yes. I this one, yes. I this one, yes. I think this one, yes. I thank you. Return soon, please. Indeed. Hey. If you wanted to invite someone else to dine with us, Professor, I would have preferred you choose a lady. Eh, I don't mind a straight-laced noble joining us. I'm happy just to share a meal with Teach. This is delicious! My absolute favorite! Ah, oh, I can eat so much of this stuff. My stomach's growling just thinking about it. Closer than ever to my dream. Uh, 
It's not luck, it's fate. That's the golden deer for you. It's not luck, it's fate. It's not luck, it's fate. That's the golden deer for you. You found it! Thank you so, so much! You're a sweetheart. I love it! Thank you so much! Fodlin is big. It's not. This is for me? Thanks. This is for me? Thanks. Hmm. Why it may. I guess there's. For me? I love it! Hey! That! That's mine! Thank you for finding it. Maybe. <laughs> I think that's the... Oh, that's mine. Uh, thank you so much. I've been looking everywhere. Thank you so much, Professor. Turn soon, please. Hey, welcome. You have a good eye. A ple you have a good eye. A pleasure doing business with. Come again. I 
appreciate this. Excuse me, Professor. May I have a moment of your time? Ah, wonderful. I was hoping you might enlighten me. About yourself, that is. You see, I happen to be quite curious about you. Well, because... There is something different about you. You possess an air of mystery. I could not help but notice when first we met. I am intrigued, to say the least. I find it rather difficult to put into words. Were I to wax poetic, I would say you remind me of the sea. Have you ever been, Professor? The sea is vast, boundless. On the surface, all seems still. Yet beneath that stillness, it is unfathomably deep. Within, it teems with life, yet without, one is lucky to glimpse a fleeting shadow. And yet, all one must do is cast a line to grasp hold of all that life. You cannot see it at a glance, but it is there all the same. About fish, of course. Oh, bother. I got sidetracked, didn't I? Right. About the sea. During a storm, the once calm waters become mighty enough to overturn even the vastest ships. Not unlike you. You are calm. You carry yourself with poise. Yet you wield great power. My brother was uncertain of you at first. He once referred to you as a youth of... dubious origin. Oh, but please do not think ill of him. He is incredibly dedicated to his work. So surely you understand why he would have doubts about one of whom he knows so little. Nobody even seems to know your age. Incidentally, how old are you? Wait, you do not know your own age? <laughs> you truly are mysterious. Hmm, looking at you. It is quite difficult for me to determine. I wonder... Could you be younger than your own students? Who? Me? Well, I am roughly the same age as the other youths here. Be that as it may, it is simply not the case. Oh, by the way! You should know I had actually been considering enrolling in the Academy for a while. I have endured hard times, but I am so grateful that those very experiences led to my acceptance at the Academy. Oh, my apologies. I am sure you have much work to do. I will not keep you any longer. We must speak again sometime, if that would be all right. Have a lovely day. Come on, why are they having... Wow, this is great! Wow, this is great!
think I get it now. You really think I'm that great? It's... It's fun when you know what you're doing. No, I just got lucky. Do you need me for something, Professor? Thanks. It's not cooling down. What? Working. Feels real good to be needed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only thing I still got from Almira is this bit of cloth. It's real tough. Whoa. Do you find Almirans interesting? I don't think we're so different from anyone else. 
it's not cooling down. Well, I still got some work to get done. Thanks for the tea. See ya, Professor. Can't argue with results, can you? Experience is everything. Oh, yeah! Get the hang of it! Perfect comprehension.
Hey, Professor. How's life treating you? Are you working today? You gotta take a day sometime. Get out in the world and have some fun. Right? Sometimes you gotta forget all the things you ought to do and focus on what you'd rather do. Hey, we should go get something to eat. My treat. Ah, fine. You're missing out, though. I need to ask a favor, and I wanted a way to work up the courage to ask you. There are thieves in my family's territory. I was wondering if you'd go with me to drive them off. You remember the thief leader you fought at Conan Tower, yeah? That's right. Although he's dead now, what's left of his band of thieves is causing trouble in Gautier territory. My father has asked me to come home and put down those murderous jerks. But he's asked for me to come alone. No knights, no backup of any sort. That's crazy, right? Because he thinks he'd lose face asking the church for help. I don't know. He could have asked another trusted house to send troops, but he only asked me. And the way my father is, he probably has some other motive that I'll never know. Maybe he just wants me to get some more experience in battle. A crazy way to suggest it, though. Anyway, I'm not going alone, no matter what he asks. I'm going to ask some of the others in our class to help, too. But none of us have your experience. If you'd come with us, I'd be grateful. Great! I'll talk to the others and see who's in. Thanks, Professor.
Will this help me grow stronger? I'll do my best. Time to start over again. We've got the thieves covered on both sides. Some of the thieves are still carrying what they stole, so we have a chance to get it back. Gotta be careful though. They'll run off faster than a nobleman's daughter if we just rush in. Target the strongholds to cut off their escape routes. Ready and willing. Father is offering a reward for every thief and rogue we take out. The more you beat, the more you get. Just remember, you gotta take them down fast. They'll bolt as soon as they're hurt. Take the strongholds and we cut off their escape route. Stay focused. Come <laughs> on. 
lost to me? Leave it to me. I'm on it. I stand ready. I got this. Get it now. No problem. Power dwells within.
Strike in action. Still got room to grow. Takes care of that. class. underestimated me. at a rapid pace. That's the golden deer for you. I'm not done yet. I'm not sticking around here to get slaughtered by a bunch of stuck-up jerks like you. Gotta use your head sometimes.
up a little. When it's expected. I like how this feels. Well done. Appreciate that.
piece of cake. Still not satisfied. Okay, that'll do it. This exit route is blocked off. Very good. Now let's keep cool and take out the other strongholds. his little bro, right? I'm sorry to say it, but yeah, I'm his brother, and he's led you into a bad spot. Anyway, your boss is dead, so this is your chance to disband this little thief gang of yours. Quiet, fool. You think I have any other choice but to be a thief? Well, it's probably on me for making such a stupid request. <laughs> Not so fast! <laughs>
celebrate later. Thank you. Today. That's one more stronghold taken and one more escape route blocked. There are still some strongholds left. Professor, which should we go for first? Try to keep up! Thank you. Another escape route blocked. We're nearly done. Take out those thieves and capture that last stronghold. Expected as much. It 
It's not luck, it's fate. This is what I do. I don't have time for failure. Naturally. Still not satisfied. Pony. Never underestimate an outsider. What? That's not good. Outmatched. I've got a grasp on this. It's not luck, it's fate. Experience is everything. setting a very good example. 
I'm on it. My brother will be pleased. A bit disappointing. Appreciate that. So nice of you. You're a big help. I stand ready. Much oh. needed. Sorry, the victory is mine. I'm not done yet. That's the last of them. Great work, everyone. Thieves everywhere. I can't believe this is what the world is coming to. At least we've restored the peace here, even if it's only for a little while. Professor, thank you for your help. We drove off the thieves and got a reward from my father. Job well done, eh? <sighs> I spoke with my father after the battle. He confirmed that his intention was for me to claim the Lance of Ruin as my own. I see why he thinks that's necessary. Still, using Miklon for that purpose. If he was still alive, I wonder what he'd think of that. I suppose I am. Miklon hated me from the moment he found out I had a crest and he didn't. He was selfish and egotistical. I know it's not right to say bad things about the dead, but he earned it. Even now, I'm still cleaning up his messes. I have to wonder though, what if it was the other way around? If he had the crest and I didn't, would I be the one my father thought was worth forgetting? Or would my fate have been wholly unlike his? You're probably right, Professor. It's not like me, is it? I don't pray much, but I think I'm going to pray for those who lost their lives to the thieves tonight. And for all of us. I'm afraid there are more days like these coming our way. Vargas has always been a cold place, never very well to do. Until about 10 years ago, our region was a battlefield for the people of the Sreng region to the north. And after the late king fell, the whole kingdom became unstable. So it's no real surprise that more and more people are resorting to thievery just to survive. And there are those rumors of the current regent being too busy chasing the ladies to bother with governing. Don't worry, I get the irony. The whole damn kingdom is in decline because of nonsense like that. I'm hoping once we get Dimitri on the throne, everything will get better. Anyway, I'll leave it up to you to decide how you want to use our reward. And Professor, if I could, I'd still like to buy you a meal sometime. Hey, come on. Aren't we friends now? Again, though, thank you for everything, Professor. I couldn't have done it alone.
What's the matter, Ingrid? I never hear you sigh like that. Oh, hi, Dorothea. And hello, Professor. Nothing's the matter. Well, nothing major. You don't look like it's nothing major. <laughs> then again, I suppose you always have a furrowed brow, don't you? Truth be told, there's rather a lot going on. It seems that there's always something to worry about. My childhood friend who's always causing trouble, my family, things like that. You see, I received a letter from my father recently. From Count Galatea? What a kind gentleman to have for a father. I thank you. But the content within the letter is what I find troubling. Let me see. Oh, it's a marriage proposal. For you. I've not met him. Though I've heard his name here and there. He began life as a merchant, but has somehow achieved rank in court. An enterprising noble from an allied territory. It's most likely that he wants the crest of Daphnal that I bear to adorn his family name. Hmm, yes, that sounds about right. The jerk. You sound as though you know him, do you? Yes, I must admit that I know him. He tried to court me when I was a singer. Best advice I can give you, Ingrid? Stay far, far away from this guy. He's offered a sizable dowry, so I must at least consider it. For the sake of my family. Dowry? <laughs> Blood money. That's all it is. Dorothea, I... This jerk's entire fortune is soaked in blood. Do you want to rebuild your own house using that kind of money? I mean... It's all just rumors, but I think it still might be worth investigating. What do you think, Professor? Should we go check this guy out? Great! Let's tell the others! Uh, really? <sighs> okay...
Back to the drawing board. I don't look odd or anything, do I? I'll need to make some adjustments. Well, how do I look? I am always up for a new adventure. Hope I'm cut out for this.
Yum. Come back soon. a bunch. Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Is that the one? Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Come back soon. The more we look into this guy, the more I see he's a monster and no good for my Ingrid. No kidding. There's no denying it. We better get back to the monastery. <laughs> Hold on a minute, you brats. Hand over the girl. Surely you can't mean me. Wait. Did he send them? This jerk figures he can grab Ingrid before things get too messy for him. Of course, we know the truth about him now, and he'll want to kill us and get rid of the evidence. But we'll never let him take Ingrid. Come on, let's hurry! Protect Ingrid! Don't let anyone get near her! Haha! <laughs> You'll never escape! Stay focused. I stand ready. Let's get to it. I got this. Leave it to me. Side 
Appreciate that. Ready anytime. I did it. I did. Increase the reward. Now hurry up and capture that girl. That merchant is giving orders to the bandits. I bet if we take him out, reinforcements will cease. still have much to learn. Thank you. Thank you. I just worked harder. train better. Oh! 
I actually won! Committed to memory. Appreciated. Try even harder next time. strike I think I've gotten stronger Another one down.
We will lend a hand. Hey, I got an idea. Favorite part. Magnificent. class. I am still far from my best. our chance.
sword. Appreciate that. Takes care of that. harder. Sorry, don't know my own strength. This is what I do.
Mario. your head sometimes. Let us be cautious. We'll support you. Everything is ready. Should've trained better. Still got room to grow. I'm good at training. situation.
matched. I'll keep it up. Trivial victory. I stand ready. I'm ha. sorry. Enemies in hiding? Here? They are really getting on my last nerve. Let's think carefully. Let us be cautious. Why me? Thank you. Thank you.
that. This is what I do. when you know what you're doing. Things done. I feel like I've grown. Welcome back. Did you speak with your father? I did. I just returned to the monastery. As soon as I informed him of the suitor's unsavory tendencies, he rejected the proposal outright. Were we to form ties with such an individual, it would bode poorly for our family, regardless of the weighty dowry offered. Oh, thank goodness. I'm so glad it all worked out. You and me both. My father also insisted I take this. Indeed. This is the Magic Lance Luin, which has been passed down for generations within my family. My father and siblings have no way of using it, since they bear no crest. Father told me I should take it, and use it to protect myself with. He said it's far better used protecting his daughter than gathering dust. Oh, that's so sweet! Your father really does mean well, Ingrid. He's unendingly stubborn, but I am proud of who he is. Dorothea, Professor, I want to thank you. It really was quite exciting, too. So, you know, don't worry about it. I could never hand over my lovely Ingrid to some jerk who only wants her for her crest. Oh. Do I belong to you now, rather than to myself? Hey, Dorothea. This is probably more than a little awkward, considering where it came from, but... Here. A ring? Is this... No. Is it? Oh, Ingrid! I accept your offer! We'll be together forever! Stop teasing me, Dorothea. I'm trying to be sincere. I wanted to find a way to emphasize how grateful I am to you. So I looked for something from among my things that I thought you would like. I mean, you may already have one like it, but I thought on the off chance you didn't. Ingrid, you are just adorable and I love it. But perhaps we should lend this ring to our teacher for now. Our dear teacher can best decide how to use it. You fought hard enough. You've earned the right to have a little fun. As you wish, Dorothea. I gave the ring to you, so you can do whatever you please with it.
this is nearly as delicious as mother's cooking. I would happily eat this every day. This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. Hey there, Cyril. You're working hard as usual. Nah, just doing my job. Rhea herself gives you your daily tasks, doesn't she? The church employs a lot of people, but not too many of them can claim they get to speak with the Archbishop every day. You should be proud of yourself. She clearly values your work ethic. Hey, um, is that everything you wanted to say? Cause I'm kinda busy here. Actually, I was hoping to ask you about Rhea. There's so much we don't know about her, but I thought maybe you... Yeah, I know more about Lady Rhea than anybody. But why should I tell you anything about her? So cold. Think about who you're talking to. Huh? What are you to me? You... don't know who I am? Of Course I do. You're Claude, house leader of the Golden Deer. That's not what I mean. <laughs> well, never mind then. Tell me. Don't you ever miss your homeland? Almira? Yes, Almira. Uh, judging by that expression, I'm guessing you're not terribly homesick. Life was a whole lot harder for me there than it's ever been around here. My dad and mom both died in the war, and there was nobody there to look after me. The king, he didn't do anything to help, so I had to survive by being smart. I had to stop being a kid real quick. I'm sorry to hear that. You don't have to apologize. It's not your fault. Regardless of whose fault it is, I'm still sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't even know that an acquaintance of mine was suffering. And sorry for asking a tactless question about your homeland. I should have known that it was likely to bring back bad memories. Nah, I get sad or mad when I think about it, but I'm used to it, so I don't mind any. I see that. Even still, I apologize for being careless. Okay, well... Thanks, Claude. If the King of Almira was like you, maybe things would have been better. Maybe the King's not a bad person and just had other stuff to worry about. But that's not much of an excuse. <laughs> if I ever meet the King of Almira, I'll give him a stern talking to on your behalf. Yeah, okay. Anyway, I gotta get back to work. Bunch of things to get done. You really are on the other side now, aren't you? Huh. Well, if nothing else, it's good of you to turn a blind eye to me. I don't know what that means, but... Okay, bye, Claude. Tell me, Marianne, do you have a love of flowers? Um... Well, I don't dislike them. 
I've happened upon a spot that's just teeming with splendid blossoms. Would you like me to show you? I think I would rather stay. It would be for the best if you kept your distance from me. Well, perhaps I could pick a few of the nicest and present them to you. With a beautiful bouquet in your arms, your magnificence would rival even that of the goddess. I would never compare myself to the beauty of the goddess. I see. Well, I don't mind. Oh, that is a lovely handkerchief you've got there. Did you know that a handkerchief reflects the sensitivity of its owner? Yours tells me you have quite a refined sensibility. If you only applied yourself a little more to the rest of your ensemble, there is no doubt in my mind. If you admire my handkerchief so much, you may have it. Uh, no, please, that is not what I meant. It was a gift from my adoptive father. I didn't choose it for myself. I'm sure I don't share his refined sensibilities, though, considering how little he and I have in common. I have to go. Such beauty. And yet, with just a little polish, she'd be a marvel. If only she'd put in some effort. Hmm. I wonder. Indeed, I shall make it my mission to awaken her beauty. There is nothing that I, Lawrence Hellman Gloucester, cannot do. Hey, Marianne? Are you there? Yes. Can I help you? Do you have a minute? Huh? Oh, um, I... Then, if you don't mind, would you come with me for a moment? So, um, did you need something from me? Yes, indeed. I have an urgent request. Have I done something? Oh, no, it's nothing like that. Really, you don't have to worry. Um... Would you close your eyes, please? Then how will I know where I'm going? Just take my hand. That's it. There. Right there. Perfect. Now open your eyes. Oh, the town is glowing from the sunset. Yes. Isn't it beautiful? Very much so. I was looking at it earlier and I thought to myself, I have to show Marianne. But why me? Because you're always looking at your shoes. You never get a chance to appreciate the scenery. Oh, I... See, the best thing about the scenery is, it's always changing. With the weather, the time of day, the season. So every view is unique. Never to be repeated. If no one sees it, it's lost. You could have just enjoyed it on your own. I wanted to share this beautiful landscape with you. Thank you. I... I'm not sure what to say. Hey, that's okay. I won't try to express this beauty in words either. Just look and remember. This will make for a nice memory. And maybe remember that I was here too. I... I will. I really will. Hey, Ignatz. What are you doing here? Uh, hello? Oh, you're painting. Ingrid, what are you doing here? I could ask you the same. I did ask you the same. Anyway, I'm just visiting the cathedral. I must say, that painting is looking wonderful. Ah! Don't look! Don't look! Why not? It really looks great. Really? I wouldn't lie. Let me have a look. Oh! It's the statue of St. Saros. I hope you don't think I was ignoring you. When I'm painting, I get totally absorbed. Of course not. My feelings aren't hurt so easily. Hmm. What if you gave her a more edgy outfit? Shorten up her skirt or something? No! That would be improper! Ooh, and how about making her sword bigger? Oh! 
Oh, turn her into a valiant knight. But she's not a knight. Ah, uh, come on. Just this once? <sighs> Huh. She doesn't exactly look like a knight. More like a maniacal demigod. Yeah, it just kind of came out that way. It's different. Not quite how I envisioned. It's my fault. I should have stuck to my original idea. I'm sorry I pushed you, Ignatz. I'll leave you be. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Are you hurt? No, no need for concern. I'm quite all right. Are you sure you're all right? Were you injured? No, nothing of the sort. I just got a bit dizzy standing up so quickly. We should go to the infirmary. Come on, I can take you there. Come now. I appreciate the concern, but I am quite all right. Look, I am perfectly fine now. See? Ignatz. Are you... there? Uh, yes. I'm sorry. Did you say something? Mm-hmm. I understand now. Understand what? Though I know little regarding affairs of the heart, even I can clearly see one's intent when they stare so much. I am sorry, but... At the moment, I am not looking for... well... Oh! No! No, 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 no! You misunderstood! I just... You just... just what? What is it? I'm just... fascinated... by you. Fascinated? By me? Yes. Your gaze, full of divine dignity. Your silhouette, as elegant as a statue. If Saint Sethleen herself were reborn, you would look no less wondrous than she. I see. Oh, I'm sorry, so sorry. I don't know what came over me saying something like that. No, not at all. Tell me, what are your thoughts on Saint Sethleen exactly? Uh, well, from the few accounts I've heard, she was a beauty, and her kindness was inexhaustible. Very good. As a reward, I shall not report your behavior to my brother. This time. <laughs> yes, I'd be most grateful if you didn't. I can hardly imagine what Seth would do if he found out. Well then, farewell. Perhaps we will have another chance to chat later. <laughs> she seemed awfully pleased, didn't she? Hmm. <laughs> to take out the trash. Got anything you want me to take? Uh, how about these? Just some old study notes of mine. Wow, that's quite the pile there. You sure it's all fine to throw away? Of course. It's all safely stored in my brain now. If I concentrate, I can access any of it with ease. Why am I not surprised? I wish I had even half your power of concentration. Okay, here we go. Ugh. This is pretty heavy. Well, it'll be a good workout. Oh, but you were telling me not to take my training so lightly. Still, can't hurt to get a little exercise in. I'll just take it at a run. See you later. Hmm. Hmm? What is it, Lysithia? Was there something in that pile of paper you wanted to hang on to after all? No, that's not it. There's just... something I want to say to you. I'm sorry for saying your way of doing things was inefficient. You've clearly grown plenty strong, doing things as you have. Not to mention, multitasking and training in that way surely presents interesting challenges. <laughs> well, sure. But if everyone has their own methods, then your methods aren't wrong either. All you did was share them with me, so there's no need for apologies. Still, 
It's probably beyond me to imitate your levels of focus and concentration. How do you even manage to throw yourself into only one thing like that? I haven't much choice. I can't waste even a single moment. I can understand that. I'm sort of the same way. I hate feeling like I'm not getting enough work done. Anyway, you should just do what works for you. You've got something you want to achieve, right? That's why you feel pressured to study so hard. Yes. Then focus on what matters to you. Leave the rest to people who have the time for it. And hey, if you need any heavy lifting done, you know where to go. The way I see it, it's all training. You know, Leone, you're so kind, so strong. Whoa, what's with the compliments all of a sudden? I was just thinking what an incredible partner you'd make. Really, you've got all of the perfect qualities. What? I'm not simply saying that. I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. <laughs> You're making me blush. What a strange way to compliment someone. Hmm. This one ought to do. Uh, what are you doing, Cyril? I'm picking out logs to carry back and chop into firewood. You can't expect to carry all these by yourself. Let me help. No, I got it. I don't want you getting hurt. Logs are heavy sometimes. I'm well aware. You should accept the help being offered. I'm older and wiser. I know best. Um, Lysithia, you seem a bit shaky. You okay? Yep, totally fine. I'm just kind of losing my grip on this log. Duh! Well, that wasn't much help as it turned out. I didn't realize they'd be that heavy. I couldn't even walk in a straight line. I told you, logs are heavy sometimes. It's hard work if you're not used to it. I feel foolish. Well, if you've learned your lesson, I'm gonna go carry the other logs. Hang on. Shouldn't you rest for a bit? Wood still needs chopping. I got a bunch of other stuff needs doing before sundown, too. In that case, let me help you carry the chopped wood. You know how rough firewood is? You'll get splinters if you carry it with your soft hands. <sighs> you can't be serious. You're just not cut out for this kind of work. Look at your hands. They're like a princess's. No point in you learning to chop wood, is there? You don't need to know how to do that stuff. You and me live in different worlds. There's no point lowering yourself down into mine. Our worlds aren't so different. We're together right now, aren't we? Sure, we live in the same places now, but that's not gonna last forever. Don't see how it could. Unless I actually turned into your little brother or something. <laughs> So this is Grander Field. Hey, Teach, not a bad place to wage war, is it? <laughs> I knew you'd understand. Plenty of places to hide and our pick of paths to advance through. It's the perfect battlefield for our tactics. I have my eye on that low hill over there. See it? It's the ideal spot to lure our enemies to and then surround them with fire. <laughs> gotcha, Teach. I know, I know, we want all students to make it back to the monastery. With you in command, we can't lose. The Imperial Princess and the Crown Prince don't stand a chance. Professor, Claude, what are you two talking about? 
What do you expect? It's Claude. I am certain he was foisting more of his ill-advised schemes on our poor professor. Oh, you have me all figured out, Lawrence. You know me better than I know myself. Win or lose, it's an honor just to participate in the legendary battle of the eagle and lion. We've got to win so we can show Captain Gerald what we're made of. Yes, I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> I shall give it my all. I'll just stay quiet and follow along so I don't get in anyone's way. That will not be acceptable, Marianne. The whole point of this exercise is for each house to act as one. Do your best. I can't wait to see how well everyone does. All right, sounds like Hilda will be taking control of a central hill and watching the battle from there. It's almost time. Come on, Teach. The battle starts now.
a bunch. Bye. <laughs> 
The battle of the eagle and lion is set to begin at long last. Everyone, show off the results of your dedicated training. Remember, we're not just fighting for honor. There's a prize at stake. It's almost time to begin. Steal yourselves, everyone. You all should know, I am not about to go easy on you today. As long as we can pull off the win, it doesn't matter how. Our victory must be absolute, no matter what it may take. It is time. I got this. Leave it to me. Ready and willing. Time. Let's get to it. Who, me? Appreciate it. I stand ready. Stay focused. Eagles and the Golden Deer are already in battle? We should take this chance to break through the Black Eagle's flank. Appreciate that. Thanks for that. It was a good try.
strength in action. Delicate flower, you know. Actually won! I will draw the Black Eagles out, Your Highness. Yes. And while you are doing so, we will take control of the Central Hill. Do-over? <laughs> 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 
never underestimate an outsider. Have I improved some? Trivial victory. Nobles must be strong. Let us be cautious. Huh. 
Thank you. Appreciate it. Expected. <laughs> Sorry, but victory is mine. Progress suits me well.
This should work. This is what I do. I don't have time for failure. I stand ready. Now you know.
Thank you. Hey, your royalness. If you promise to let me have the prize, I'll let you take the honor of victory. Do we have a deal? Enough of your foolishness. I... Wait a moment. You are trying to anger me, is that it? <laughs> Saw right through me, did you? Well, if there's no deal, I'll just have to win this thing fair and square. I will happily face you here and now. Do not hold back, Claude. I'm certain I've improved. myself with you as my foe. This will be a great chance to test our metal. Do not underestimate me, Professor, or you will fail. I'm not setting a very good example. I suppose my training wasn't enough. The Blue Lions have no choice but to retreat. Steady now. Um, 
I stand ready. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks for that. Princess, heads up! There's a rat right by your imperial feet. <laughs> I... <sighs> How dare you make a fool of me? You will not rile me with such childish tactics. Ah, so the sheer terror in your eyes was something else entirely. My mistake. Anyway, it was only a joke. You really hope to unsettle me with childish jokes? It won't work. You must stand and fight. I will cut you down until you have no blood left to bleed. What? I was just trying to rally your spirits. Now, to victory! I hate to admit it, but it seems this is as far as the Black Eagle House goes. That is the end of this year's Battle of the Eagle and Lion. And the winners are... The Golden Deer! A victory worthy of the feast. 
We did so well, there's no way we didn't secure that prize. Well done, Claude. I see your schemes are not to be underestimated. Yes, I must wholeheartedly agree. As ever, I have proven to be no match for you. It is the utmost honor to receive praise from your voice. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Really, though, you know, I was lucky to have Teach on my side. In all honesty, you two made me work for it. If I had to face you again, there's no telling which way it would go. What do you think, Teach? How did the other houses fare? Ah, too true, Teach. That just about sums it up. Oh, I'm sorry. That's probably hard for the losers to hear, isn't it? In any case, I hope the day never comes when we have to put this experience to use. Agreed. I would hate to know a future in which I'm forced to cross swords with you. I wouldn't mind. I'll accept a challenge from either of you at any time. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Well, now that the three-way battle has ended in an alliance victory, I dare say it's time for some post-battle reconciliation. The victor has but one request. Hear me out. When we get back to Garrig Mach, let's have a grand feast to break down the walls between our respective houses. And by a grand feast, I mean a fairly regular feast in the dining hall. <laughs> I accept your proposition. Please notify me once your preparations are complete. It seems I have no choice but to drown my sorrow at losing in overindulgence. I'll help you with the preparations. <laughs> it's not a feast if you don't eat too much. Leave it to the Imperial Princess to say such wonderful things. That's not exactly what I said, but forget it. Laugh all you want. No, well, if you insist. <laughs> hey, Teach. Looks like you're having a good time, too. Seeing you smile like that means we've got no choice but to have a great time tonight. Let's get going. Ugh, I can't believe our house leader ate so much he passed out. I guess he should just sleep it off? Oh, Professor! Great work today. As long as we have you and Claude, the Golden Deer House is unstoppable. I am sure we did not require Claude for our victory, but it certainly would not have been possible without our Professor. <laughs> I'm so pleased to be in your class, Professor. You truly bring out the best in us. Let's keep fighting, and winning! I knew the tactics you learned from the captain would be something else. I better work harder to catch up. I have had the opportunity to experience much. Please allow me to offer you my gratitude once more, Professor. Because of you, I managed to get through the fight without feeling like a burden. Thank you, Professor. I hear Lady Rhea and Sedith are singing your praises, too! You're always so modest. You really showed them, Teach. I would really hate to be on your bad side. Oh, look. Claude has been revived. Your tactics were ingenious, and you've somehow mastered the power of the King of Liberation's relic. You really are incredible. Though you can be a bit absent-minded at times, your mind is like a giant bowl with a tiny crack in it. Claude, saying that only makes your own mind bowl seem tiny. How dare you? My bowl is much bigger than Teach's. Unfortunately, it doesn't just have a crack. The whole bottom of my bowl is missing. In other words, you are the absent-minded one, not our professor. That's true. He just admitted it. <laughs> it's unusual to hear you laughing, Marianne. Your smile is really cute. It feels so great to laugh and joke around like this, doesn't it? Hmm? Well, look at that. Someone's having a secret rendezvous in the courtyard. All joking aside, I'm having trouble sizing you up, Teach. The honest truth is that I'd hate to have you as an enemy. If possible, I wish for you to fight by my side. If I could use the sword of the creator, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. 
I bet if I could use it, you would trust me to, right? That selflessness may be what I like best about you. I can only call your deeds during the Battle of the Eagle and Lion quite versatile. Comparing against their performance at the mock battle of the Great Tree Moon, the students have grown significantly. It is clear that this is a result of your guidance. In appreciation of your efforts and to show our high hopes for the future of your students, I award you with this. Please continue to instruct your students as a model teacher. So, you've made good use of all my power after all. I would have been upset if you had failed at such an easy task. It pains me to assign such a disturbing mission to you during such a blessed moment in time. However, next month your assignment will be to journey to Ramire Village to investigate an abnormal occurrence there. Ramire Village? If I recall, you've been there with your father many times. I have yet to ascertain the details, but it would seem the villagers have been acting strangely. I have already dispatched the Knights to verify the authenticity of this information. They should be back shortly. I suggest you begin by finding out what they have discovered. I pray this is not a bad omen. May the Goddess protect you all.